You know what's the worst sound in the entire world? That clanky, clicky, distorted bass tone. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to clean up your bass tone so that it's still powerful, it's still punchy, and still cuts through a dense rock or metal mix, but doesn't sound harsh. In the last video of this series, we talked about how to clean up all that fizz and sizzle out of distorted electric guitars. So if you are interested in that, be sure to watch that video as well. And if you don't know who I am, I'm Bobby Balo, the mixing and mastering engineer at Raytown Productions. And I help home studio owners and bedroom producers make better sounding music without needing to buy expensive gear or unnecessary plugins. I think today's video is gonna blow your mind and it's gonna showcase the importance of how much harshness can actually live in a bass guitar. But before we jump into that video, I do have a gift for you. I put together a list of my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins that I use all the time. It covers everything from distortions, EQs, compressors, reverbs, delays, even amp sims. It's all things that I use all the time when I'm mixing and mastering music, and I think you're gonna find it super helpful. Again, the plugins are free, and this download is my gift to you, totally free. There's a link to it in the description. Go and check that out, that sounds interesting to you. In the last video, I showed you how to clean up the guitar frequencies so they sound less harsh. And today, we're gonna do the same thing, but for bass. So I have a song here. Let me just give you a quick little sample of what it sounds like. There's a whole lot going on, right? The bass, can sometimes be deceptively harsh and we just don't notice it. So typically in metal, you usually will split your bass into two tracks. One is like a distorted track and the other one tends to be a clean bass sound so that your low end is still nice and clean and full. So that's exactly how this is. There's our clean bass end and then a distorted top end. So, and then if we play everything back together, Okay, so let's grab an EQ and just start doing the same thing we did last time with the guitars where we're going to sweep through and listen for the absolute most piercing, horrible frequencies and then we're going to target those and pull them away. For bass, the, the frequencies tend to be in different regions than the guitar. Bass tends to have this really gritty, clacky thing going on around 1K, 1.2K, somewhere in there. And then there's a really piercing, like, buzzing pick attack sound around 2k and then we can also get into like some of those harsh 4k frequencies and 6k so let's go and find out which annoying harsh sounds we have in our bass and then eliminate them so that's that 1k sound that i don't like i usually cut this out uh, pretty significantly in my when I mix bass. So that's like 1.8k. This is starting to get a little harsh. But you can see right around three and a half k. This is starting to this. They're starting to get this whistle and this annoying sound. And actually like 8K gets almost buzzy like a, like a distorted guitar. So what I would suggest doing is let's kill some of these frequencies down here. Like that, that 2.3, 2.2K, get rid of that. And then let's just roll off the top end of this bass. The guitars are already pretty bright and they take up a lot of that space already in the mix. Cymbals are gonna be 8K and above, we want to give some air to the vocals, so just roll off the bass, like right around 4K, you know, just something so that it's subtle. So that's with all the frequencies in there. So let's just do something like that. Now there's still some of this, something in here that I don't like that is still really harsh, probably around 3.5K. Yeah, it's right here, 4K. Um, 
Now, before we make this move, let's bring the guitars and everything back in context and sweep around and see if if the 4K region jumps out noticeably in the mix. Sometimes it sounds harsh when we have it soloed, and it can be totally fine when all the other instruments are there. But we want to just double check to make sure that it's actually harsh and building up with other frequencies in our mix. So let's bring everything back and then fine tune where that last little bit of annoying frequency is and then cut that. So it's actually a little bit higher, right? It's like 4,500 hertz right here. So let's do a nice cut there just to take that edge off. A little bit is necessary there again, right? We want a little bit of the aggression. So it's always good to bring everything back in and then make fine tune these cuts so that you're, you're pulling the right amount out. You don't want to suck all of that out. You're going to have a really weak sounding bass. So just try something like that. Let's uh, AB what our bass tone sounds like now. So original. After the EQ. I mean, you can just hear from that how much easier it is to listen to on your ears. So I have a question for you. How do you mix bass in a metal or rock song? Do you split it like I show in this video, or do you leave it as a single track and then add in your facts or reamp the bass? Let me know in the comments. Let's get a discussion going. And as a reminder, don't forget that I have that free downloadable PDF guide of my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins. I know you're going to find it super helpful. Your free download link is in the description. I want to thank you so much for your time and attention today, and I hope to see you in the next video of this series, which is going to tackle drum cymbals. So don't miss that. I'll catch you soon.